And good evening. Thank you very much for joining me. If you can hear me and see me okay, please let me know in the chat. The chat is working. Excellent. That's the first time in a week. I'm going to be doing a three-player playthrough tonight of Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Um, because of lockdown restrictions, but also the fact that the two people that I'm playing against aren't even in this country, let alone live anywhere near me, we're using Tabletop Simulator. This is an official mod for the game. It's really nicely done. Uh, I've not played this game before. I've read through the rules a couple of times. Uh, I'm playing against Mark and Stevie tonight. Stevie's in the same boat as me, read through the rules, uh, not played it. Uh, Mark, however, has played it a lot, mainly solo, but Mark is the expert tonight. Um, so if we get stuck, Mark's going to help us with the rules. We're going to be doing uh, primarily a playthrough, but I know some of you watching um, probably don't know how to play. So I'm actually going to try and explain it as we go, but it isn't going to be a full tutorial up front. Uh, we're just going to we're just going to play and explain it uh, as as we as we make moves. Right, we're using Discord for chatting, so if I head on over to Discord and say good evening to Mark. Now, whereabouts are you based, Mark? And how is Malta at the moment? <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, how bad are things over there? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> right. Uh, well, yeah, thank you for joining us. And I just said to everybody on the chat that you're, you're the rules expert on the game. You know the game better than me, Stevie. So, um, yeah, except people can't hear you. Ah, all right. That, that's a problem that people can't hear you. Um, right. Now, that's interesting because they should be able to hear you and I'm not sure why they can't. So, yeah, bear with us a minute. There are a couple of things that I can try. I'm basically wearing, wearing my headphones tonight, uh, which I, I, the last lot of streams I did last year, I didn't wear the headphones. Um, that shouldn't affect it because I, I can hear you. Uh, just say something again, Mark. Yeah. So yeah, you're not being picked up by my streaming software, but you are clearly being picked up by me. So I'm going to unplug my headphones. Right. Say something now. Hello. Does yeah. Work? So that's working. Unfortunately, my headphones mean that it interrupts the system sound from my broadcasting software. Right, so, Mark, I was asking you how things were in Malta. Could you say that again for the audience? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, well, tensions are rising up like the whole rest of the world. It's around an 8 on 10, like we said. <laughs> in terms of how bad things are? Yeah. <laughs> right. Unfortunately. Okay. Well, I hope everywhere... I, and are you in lockdown at the, there at the moment? Uh, not yet, but the teachers have gone on strike. Oh, right. A few minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, Mark is a bit quiet. Right. Let's turn that up a bit. There you go. Right. I've turned, uh, I've turned Mark up a bit. So, hopefully, uh, hopefully you can hear him fine. I will say hello to Stevie. How are things hello, over hello. in Finland? Actually, we're doing okay right now. Um... Finnish tradition is to go off to your cottage in the woods and spend midwinter there the same way you spend midsummer there. I don't know why you would want to be on the shore of a frozen lake in the middle of winter, um, <laughs> but that is that is how they do things around here. And that, of course, means that everyone's a bit more spread out. Yeah. So the numbers, at least being reported, look good, but we're not sure if that's just because people aren't getting tests while they're off in their cabins or because right. the distance is helping. So. Yeah. For for us anyway, lockdown hasn't gotten any worse over the last mm, probably three weeks or so. But right. when break in the university ends and and all of the teens and young young adults go back to school, it might it might pick up again. Yeah, so, fingers right. crossed. But fingers crossed. Yeah, right. So the audience can hear Stevie and Mark. I've turned Mark up a little bit, so hopefully that's fine. You might get my, a little my bit. Apologies of apologies to the audience. Yeah, you might get a little bit of echo because I'm not wearing my headphones now but I do have a noise gate enabled. So my microphone shouldn't pick up the audio that's coming from my speakers. We will see, we will see. But yeah, let's crack on. We, now this mod, as I say, as I say is really good uh, and it has most of the setup already done for us. There was a, there was a set, set of buttons um, and we've clicked the three player button. It's done most of the setup for us. There's a few bits it hasn't done, uh, but the next thing is that we're gonna roll the dice to see who goes first. So I will be one to two, DB three to four, Mark, you can be five to six. And we are a six. So Mark is going first. So the first thing that happens as the final part of setup in reverse turn order, you will notice that some cards have been dealt out here. 
So there's two piles of cards. There's player cards and there's hero townsfolk. Uh, and what happens is there is one card more than the number of players of player cards and then hero townsfolk. And in reverse player order, so this is going to start with Stevie, you basically pick a pair of cards. So which pair would you like to take? I'm intrigued by the criminal who gives virtue. So I'm going to take this pair of cards. Okay. Oops. And they Oop. have just flown around instead yeah, of... Yeah, being... some, something did that. It did that with me earlier. I'm not weird, sure why. Weird physics bit. The side tables are a bit table. fun. You have to uh, yeah. take the upper perspective, uh, right. top-down perspective. But uh, I'll bring them over here. And I believe this one will get shuffled into my deck. Yeah, so the hero townsfolk folk get shuffled into your deck. Which colour are you? You're blue, aren't you? So each yeah. player has a deck of eight starting townsfolk. The card that um, Stevie's drafted, that goes into that deck. So your deck starts off with nine cards. The other card is the player card, and this determines a whole bunch of things. First of all, the number at the very top tells you where uh, your Viscount starts. So you start on space number 10, wherever that is. These boards were randomly assigned as well. Here we go. Here's number 10. There's number 10 here. Uh, other things on the card, you start the game with a stone, a gold, an inkwell, 10 silver coins, one deed, two debt cards, and two corruption. Gosh. So you've got a stone, an inkwell, a gold. I guess I'll um, put these guys down over here yeah, somewhere. So Spread two them out. debt so cards these... and a deed card. Now the debt cards are worth minus two points at the end of the game, but if you can pay them off, then you actually get a cube as an immediate benefit. So you kind of want to pay off your debts. Uh, the deed cards are worth one point at the end of the game, but if you manage to flip them over, they're worth three. So both of these types of cards you do want to flip over. Two. And then the back of the starting card is a reminder card. Yep, yep, right. Um, and you gained two corruption. So each player, you're looking at this upside down, but each player has a player board. Uh, this is Stevie's player board from my perspective. Um, basically, yeah, corruption marker starts here, virtue marker starts here, and they'll be coming in towards each other. Right, so me next. Uh, now, I should have set up a camera angle, and I haven't, so I will do that now very quickly. Right, now, which one of these do I want to choose? I don't, I don't know. First time playing the game, so it's all a bit of a guess for me. Um... I think I'm going to take this pair. Oh gosh, I, I might just put it in my hand for now. <laughs> there we go. Right, now, here's my player board. Um, so my Townsfolk card gets shuffled into my deck. And then my player card, here we go. So my Viscount starts off on position one, which is here. Uh, I get one stone and two ink wells. Now, where are the resources? Up here. Oh, here. Right. Okay. So one stone and two inkwells. Uh, I start the game with eight silver, and we have a handy, hand dandy little counter. Uh, and I start the game with two deeds and one debt card. So the debt cards are here, uh, and the deed cards are here. Now. These deed cards and debt cards, there isn't uh, an unlimited supply of these. In fact, there is a fixed number based on the number of players in the game. You see here we've got 14 of these and we have 14 debt cards. And what happens is when either one of these decks runs out, that triggers the end of the game. We then finish that round and play one more round. But yeah, those, those two decks of cards, they are the, the end game trigger. And well, the final think, thing is I get I one victory. I think, Paul, you're supposed to take your starting setup ones from the bag and not the oh, piles. Oh, sorry. So we'll you just did say we'll, that. And I, I add, we'll just add, no, go ahead and keep it and we can just oh, okay. place them from the bag so that the counts right. are right at the beginning. Okay, there we go. So your starting ones do not come from that supply. Paul, just to clarify, I'm going to uh, flip this deed because uh, it's part of the starting setup and I get one other uh, resource, basically. The you debt, got, you're yeah. flipping a debt straight away. A debt, sorry. Yep. Which is what That's that icon there means. Icons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's good to see that the discussion in the chat is more about the Viscount biscuits and not the game. Yeah, which is what it's all about. 
Uh, and that's it. That is, the, that is the rest of setup done. Apart from we shuffle our deck and we each draw three cards from our deck. Right, so uh, Mark is going to start. Mark is going to take the first turn. And on your turn, you perform all of these steps that are shown on your player board here in order from left to right and then play passes to the next player. So I, I will go through them and Mark, you can correct me if I get anything wrong. The first thing that you do on your turn is this card here with the X on means that all of your character cards on your player board, which at the start of the game is none, but if there were any there, they would all move to the right and then anything that was on the rightmost space would basically fall off. When it falls off, it triggers, uh, if it has a falling off ability, it will trigger at that point. Uh, and then what happens with the card mark once it's fallen off? Does it stay there? It's a discard pile, basically, and it it's can get reshuffled into your deck. If you have right. criminals, once it's reshuffled, you end up taking corruption. Yeah, okay. So that's the first thing that happens on Mark's turn. He doesn't have any cards on his player board, so we skip that. The next step is that Mark will choose a card from his hand and put it onto this leftmost slot here. So which card would you like to play? Right, there you go. Now, there's a whole host of stuff on the card, and I mentioned when a card falls off, if it has a falling off ability, that's this here. So this card has an X on it. What that means is when this card falls off the end, this ability triggers, which is to flip over either a debt or a deed card. Right. Um, if the card had any criminal icons on it, then something else would have triggered at this stage, but we'll, we'll get to that when it, when it happens. Right. The next step is step two, which is movement. So your Viscount will move around the board, but the number of spaces it moves is equal to the silver cost on the card that you played. This is one, so your Viscount moves one. Now, you can never move it fewer than, fewer spaces than indicated. You can move it more, but you have to pay one silver for each other space you want to move it to. So Mark, where would you like to go to? I'm going to move one space over here. Okay, so basically Viscounts move along the arrows. So Mark has moved from here, all the way up here, over the bridge, to here. And are you going to pay to move it anymore? No. Right. Okay, so the next step is this one here that looks like a, a VCR play icon. Uh, show me age there. Um, what this means is that you can dismiss the character card that is currently next to where the Viscount is, which in this case is this one. If you dismiss it, it will cost you two coins. You will get the, um, the icon that's printed on it, which in this case, that's a criminal. And a criminal is a wild icon. And whenever you dismiss it, you also get this bonus here. So that's the decision you need to make at this point. Do you want to dismiss that character? I will not dismiss it because okay. I plan to use it later during right, the turn. Okay. Right. So the next thing is this bit here. Now, you don't do all of these. These are the four different actions that you can do in the game. Uh, and Mark is now going to choose one of those actions and then we'll explain how that action works. Which action would you like to do? So given I'm on the outer circle, I can do either a trade or a yep. build action. I'm going to do the trade action, right. which in the case of that spot allows me to uh, eliminate, that's uh, destroying basically a card yep. for each three bags I have. Yeah. So what we now do is we count how many bags Mark has in total on his player board. So the character here is worth two. There's also two pre-printed here. So that's four. And if you look carefully on the icon here, you can actually increase the number of bag icons you have temporarily by spending silver. So do you want to buy any extra bag icons? I am going to buy two bag icons. In fact, right. I went from nine to seven yep. to eliminate got... my local cards I have in hand. Right. So that gives you six bags. And because of the space that you are on, six bags allows you to destroy two cards. And where do you destroy cards from then? Your hand? Yes, uh, it's either your hand or the top of your uh, draw pile. I'm going to destroy these two starter uh, characters and right. get the silver printed on their, um, th their silver value, basically. Oh, so when you destroy a card, you get the silver value printed on it? Yes, not when discarding, but when destroying a card. You're destroying, right, gotcha. So that's um, for silver back. And as you say, they are the starting cards. So there's a kind of deck building element to this game in that you'll be getting better cards into your your deck as the game goes on. Um, right, the next action is this one. This is where you can recruit the character that is currently next to your Viscount if you want to. When you recruit them, you pay the silver cost. 
You gain this ability here. This either applies when you either dismiss them or recruit them. And then the card goes, where does it go? To your discard pile? Your discard pile, yeah. Discard pile, which means it will cycle round whenever you get to do it. So is that what you're doing? Um, yes, I'm going to pay for it. And I'm oh. going to move it to my discard pile. I get one corruption. I think you've just moved all 14 cards. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's 14 cards there in a pile. There you go. So, yeah, we have piles of 14 cards here. Right, and then the next bit only applies on your turn if your corruption and virtue markers have, ripped, have met, have collided. So that, that doesn't apply. And then the next thing is you draw back up to your hand size, which for all players at the start of the game is three. And then you're done. Yes, that's the end of my turn. There you go. Made it look easy. So my go. I haven't got the faintest idea because I've not played before. But based on the cards I've got in my hand, I think I might be doing something similar. <laughs> so yes, I'm, I'm going to play this card here. Um, and then I'm going to move one space. So where am I? What colour am I? Red. I never play red. I wonder if I can change the colour of it to purple. Um, I think I want to go on the outside as well. And again, you have to follow the arrow. So you've got to go clockwise. So I'm going to go to here. And then I'm going to choose. I can either trade or build. If I was to build, I only have one build icon here. Uh, and I do have a stone. But that's no. I'm, I'm going to trade. So I've actually got one, two, three, four. Um, I, I don't know how valuable silver is, so I'm not going to spend any at this point. I'm just going to use my four bags uh, to basically gain two ink wells. So one, two. There you go. Lots of nice ink wells. Uh, then I recruit a character if I want to. Um, and I think I do actually. Yeah, I'm going to recruit that character. So I spend two silver. Uh, I'm going to take this card, put it on my, oh, put it on my discard pile, and when I recruit it, I get this, which is basically I move my virtue one space to the left. Now, when does this immediate bonus apply? Is that that's just when I play the card? That's when you play them into your card row. Yeah. Which Got one, Paul? This one this here. Brown, the brown part there with the. Yeah, that one. Yes, but the one in the top right corner. This Anytime you dismiss or recruit. Yeah. Where, where did you hire him from, Paul? I think. Here. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. cheating. You, Again. You, you have the, the stone cutter available, not the friar. I thought I was blue. Sorry, wrong pile. <laughs> um, okay, I'll spend an extra. You had spent two money for it, Paul. I did, yeah. so I'm spending an extra money. I'm recruiting this one. And the ability of this one is this, which is what? Discard a card from your hand to your discard pile so that you can draw more cards and uh, okay, basically refresh right. your hand faster. So you can cycle through your cards more. Right, I'm going to put that one in there. Um, right, so that was that, that was that, that was that. And then I draw two cards and I'm done. Right, so this game is playing a lot smoother than I thought, because I've read through this rulebook twice and I thought the rulebook was fairly good, um, but I it didn't sit in now that we've played it now that i've just played one turn all of a sudden it's like oh yeah right <laughs> it's flowing a lot better than i thought it might that's funny i can rearrange my uh... following on mark's example yeah, yeah. i'm gonna move <laughs> two because the cost of my played card is two yeah so you and have I land to move on two. him yeah uh, I could pay to move more, but I, I want to blow cards up from my deck as well. Okay. So um, since I've landed on Mark, he gets the option to rearrange, but I think because he only has one card there, it basically... That is correct. Card. That was right. perfectly played. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he can't just move it there and leave empty spaces to the left. So yeah. he doesn't There's a message in the chat to say that I kept my virtue by mistake. No, what I did is I, actually, I started the game with one virtue, and then I gained an extra one from taking this, which I then put back. So I, I did undo that, but I, it is right. It is right. Yeah. I'm not cheating. No, I'm not cheating. <laughs> um, I have uh, four bags. Yep. And there's a fellow here that gives three. So I'll pay. Uh, oh, no, that's. Uh, I would get this virtue if I paid to dismiss him. If you paid to dismiss and... him, you'd gain a virtue and you would get three bags for this turn. Oh. 
That's a good deal for two coins. Yeah, I think I will because I was going to pay two coins to get two bags anyway. Yeah. So I'll pay two coins to use him, and he goes discarded, yeah. and you get one virtue. Uh, and I get a virtue, and now I have seven bags, so I can take these two cards in my hand and make them also go away into the bag. Yeah. Um, and they are worth a total of three coins. Three coins. You guys are destroying yeah. cards in your deck really early. My three coins back. Yeah. Um, and then we move on to the uh, purchase a card phase, and I have the option to build to purchase it's the clergy new card now. And he gives me a re rearrange my characters, which is not going to be useful. Two oh, the chat has just told me a... about a black box. Yes, thank you. I've just spotted that. <laughs> Let me sort that uh, out. Two coins for a nope, cross nothing. symbol. It's kind of like buying buying an inkwell at the time. I don't think he's that great though, so I'm I'm not gonna buy him. Well, he does cost one. That's the reason. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think I'll let him be. Uh, so then we oh, oh, well. don't have a collision, um, yeah, and then I draw up. So I draw three cards from my hand, and I think I'm finished. Right. Thank you, Andrew, for letting me know about that black box, but it, it should now have gone. Right. Back to you, Mark. Okay. So let's see what we can do here. Yeah, this is the best uh, play. Indeed. So I'm going to move this character, character to, move the right. to the right first. Now that's covered over the icons that was on that space already. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm going to play this character. Mm -hmm. And that allows me to move once. I do not uh, have any criminal symbols, so I don't get any corruption. I moved obviously already once. I'm going to check if I'm going to dismiss that character over there. And mm. uh, Overboard Games is in the chat. Thank you for joining in. It says you can only dismiss the card to get the extra icons if you are doing one of those actions. And I think I think that's true. That's I correct. Don't, yeah. That's yeah, correct. I don't yeah. think you can yeah. just dismiss it anyway. It's only if you're taking the appropriate action. Exactly. Which so you can always given I'm trading, yeah, I can do it. Given yeah. I'm trading, if I wanted to, obviously. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I'm going to. Okay. So two coins. I'm going to, that's correct. I'm going to spend two coins to dismiss uh, yeah. that card to the discard Go pile. Get one uh, virtue. Yeah. I'm going to spend another coin. So that's three bags along with the five I have over here. That's eight bags to get uh, myself uh, four inkwells. Right. Okay. After that. Um... Michael, mm -hmm. the dice it, it does not come with the mod. I basically added that in and we use that to determine the start player. That's, that's all we use it for. So yeah, no dice rolling in the game. So now I get the option to buy this character if I'd like. And I'm actually going to say no. Okay. <clears throat> I'm right. just going to draw up and uh, it's your turn, Paul. My go. So this character moves to the right. Uh, now then, so I've got loads of ink wells. So I could do something with that, couldn't I? How do you get gold? I guess that's from trading. And I'm almost at the trading space. Okay, so I need to look at whether I want to move two or three. I think I want to move. I think I want to move two spaces. So I'm going to put this card here. Um, it doesn't have a criminal on it, so I don't get any nasty stuff. I then move two. So I'm red. So I go one, two. Uh, I'm going to choose the trade action. So I'm not going to dismiss this. Uh, I've got four books. Um, I don't have much in the way of silver, so I'm going to keep my silver. I'm just going to use the four books to generate two gold. Two. Good old physics. Um, I then recruit a character if I want to, and I'm going to. So I'm going to recruit the one that I accidentally recruited last time. Because <laughs> I like him that much. So my virtue goes up, I get the card, and my things haven't collided, and then I draw one card. And that's me done. 
So, hmm. so my guy slides down, which doesn't generate any effects. I have. Sure, I'll play the financier. She has a lightning bolt, so I do that now. Yeah, so the lightning bolt on a card means you get the ability printed on it as soon as you play it, but only then. So I'll discard Mr. Abbott, who I don't want to use, uh, in, at least in the short term, and I'll gain two coins. Then I'm going to move three spaces because she has a cost of three. So I go one. You do not get the two coins for discarding, though. Oh, you got it for the action, okay. Yeah, yeah for the for financier, financier, yeah. So, so that's an immediate action. Yeah. One, mm -hmm. two, three. So I've stopped at trade again. Um, I can't hire this guy or dismiss him because he doesn't have anything to do with trading. Um, I do have five trade icons visible. Yeah. So for four trade icons, I can flip uh, a debt or flip a deed. card. Yeah. Uh, so I will flip over one of my debts. Uh, and get a resource, which I think I want to be a gold. Yeah, so flipping over a debt, obviously you've effectively gained two points, but you get the resource as a one-off bonus for flipping it over. Yep. Okay, look at that, um, how much money you've got. 13. It'll yeah. probably all run out soon. Um, and now I have the option to buy the Tinker, and he gives a gold every time he shows up, so I think he is probably worth buying. Okay. So I'll spend two put him in my discard pile and I get to use the um, ability in the top right corner, the purchase or dismiss action yeah, to gain a Which virtue. is a virtue. These markers are going to meet fairly quickly, aren't they? Like two atoms in, an, in a in a, yeah. in a poem. <laughs> They're just headed right towards each other. And am I right in thinking that once they've met, that's it for the whole game? They, they oh, stay no, no, together? No, no. They, they reset. They reset over and over and over again. When do they reset? As soon as you resolve the collision. Yeah, when the so, collision is over, uh, yeah. the last step is that you put oh, them back. Oh, okay. Back. So once you've resolved it, they split apart again. Right, okay. Uh, exactly. <laughs> but you only resolve the collision on your turn at on that On your stage. turn in... Yeah. Okay. All I've right. drawn my card. All set. Off we go. Okay, that's my turn. I'm going to move this character here, this character here. Uh, there's one thing I forgot last time, and it's important that I do this. This guy has a recurrent effect that when oh, you trade, yeah. you get a coin. I did not get that coin. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry for forgetting that. Uh, now I'm going to play. Uh, okay. Decisions, decisions. Yeah. The usual with this game. I'm going to play this character. And I'm yellow. I'm going to move one inside, yeah. two, three. So you've gone on, on the, the inside. inside. <clears throat> yeah. So there are four actions available in the game. We've only seen one of them so far, um, which is the trade action. But when you're on the outer ring, you can trade or build. And when you're on the inner ring, you can either, what are the action's called? Transcribe a manuscript. Transcribe or you can a manuscript. Or uh, workers, workers at the castle. Yeah. Which one do you want to do? I am going. Okay. Now I'm going to transcribe a manuscript. Uh, you're going to grab the one I wanted. Now the the interesting part is I can even use gold to uh, or stone because oh, I have this character now. Because of this yeah. character, instead of, of spending my inkwells, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to spend one gold and one inkwell, uh -huh. along with the cross I have uh, on that character yeah, to get this three. manuscript. It gets you the manuscript. <clears throat> so that has an immediate benefit on it, and, and I get one virtue. Do we then reveal the next one? Yes. Yep. Okay. Now, what's the benefit of having the manuscripts? Isn't there a bonus when you collect a certain number? Yeah, These so they can be seen on this card over here, the okay. guide card. Uh, at the bottom, you can see in the bottom row uh, that if you have on the uh, different colored manuscripts in sets of one ah, right. or two or three or four, they provide different points. Oh, values. Okay, and this is a gray one. You can have multiple sets. Yep. And then there's something else. There's these five cards down here. One is for the castle leader. First person in the middle of the castle. Yep. Agreed. And the others are for the first person uh, to achieve uh, three um, manuscripts of the same color. Right. Gotcha. And they provide a symbol for the same action, for yeah. the particular action. So benefits to having three of the same, but generally you want to be collecting different colored ones for points at the end. 
Yeah. Gotcha. Right. <clears throat> Good this. I'm enjoying this. Right. Is it my go? Um, no. no. So I'm going to <laughs> uh, pay two coins to recruit oh, you're this recruiting. guy. Yeah. Oops. Again. <laughs> so the guy goes here. You gain a virtue. Exactly. Another virtue. And I'm just going to draw cards. It's your turn, Paul. Right. Okay. So my character's moved to the right. I'm then going to play. Depends where I want to move. I think I want to move there. Oh, hang on a minute. There's an arrow going that way. Oh, rats. I need to move two. If I want to get on the inside, I need to move two. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's move three, because three is better than two. Let's move three. Um, so when this card comes into play, I've got an immediate ability, um, which is to um, discard a card. I'll discard this one, I think. And I get two coins, much needed coins. Um, and then I'm moving three. So I'm going one, two, three. Okay, so I've moved me three. I don't want to pay to go any further. And then I am going to choose the transcribing a manuscript action myself as well. So I need three of the crosses. I have one there. Uh, oh, I can take this one as well. Well, I can't because it's got, it's the wrong icons, but I, I could have taken that one. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm just spending two inkwells. So, so that's the three. I will take that. I get four coins. Two, four. Uh, I will then spend two of those coins to recruit this one, which gets me a virtue. And I think that's it. I'll draw two more cards. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm good. Uh, all right. I am going to slide my fellows down. I am going to play a laborer this turn, which means I move twice. I'll move over here. Um, I'm going to build this turn. Oh, with... a new action we haven't seen before. My laborer's only got one uh, hammer, Yeah. but I can add a stone. So I have yeah. a build of two. I consult the top of the very top of the player aid, and it shows me that I need three, three. if I planned wrong. Three, you can dismiss five, the, um, the criminal. Ah, this guy here can yeah. give me, yes. I can pay two to use the skull, which counts as a wild uh, option. Does. Yep. I was going to buy him, but I guess I'll just dismiss him and, and pretend that... That uh, icon, which is shuffle your discards back into your draw pile. Right. Right now. Yeah, right now. That's good, because I bought some nice characters. I'll get them sooner this way. All right, so I have a total of three, and the first building that I build out of the section on the right will cost me three yep. hammer, which is what I have now. I'll build this building, which increases my hand size by one. Right. And put it on top of this icon, which has the uh, flip over a deed or nice. debt symbol on it. So I'll get to flip over another debt. Yep. And get another resource, which will again resource. be a gold. So whenever you build, you can only build on the building spots on the same section as your Viscount. But if yeah, there's a the river, two that are right above you. you can only build on that side. So basically, yeah, you've, you've got two. Um, and as, as Steve mentioned, when you put a building on a space, you get the benefit of that space. There can only be one building per space. But once a building is on the other space, it, it makes a link. And both players on either side of that link will get the extra bonus printed there. So yeah, quite a nice little bonus. Um, now I have the option to purchase the fellow that's at the top of this here, Diplomat. Yeah. Uh, sounds great, let's buy a Diplomat. He's only one. He's only one, cheap. He has, oops, let's go down instead of up. Okay, let's buy and a the ability and is has... rearrange the cards on your player board. So the first one that I want to dive will dive. Um, let's swap these two because the laborer isn't very good no <laughs> he can go sooner than later all right uh and then i'll draw to a total of four because i've just increased my hand size yeah 
Nice. Okay. And I'm all set. Okay. Right to you, Mark. So, hmm. At the first, to start, I'm just going to discard uh, like that. Um, I can get to flip the steel. Yeah, this has a discard, uh, falling off ability. So. Yep. And I'm going to play. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to play this guy over here. Move so one. Two. two. Uh, he's going back out. Yep. And you're trading. I am. Um, yeah, I'm trading. I have three bags. This way I will have two bags. Let me see. Um, yeah, and I will take two gold. Okay. And I'm going to purchase this guy over here. You're going to recruit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that's... That card gets I get you a debt. debt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a good card, but it does get you a debt when you recruit it. Okay. Start. And that's the end of my turn. I'm just going to draw. Okay. So this character falls off. I get an ability. I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to get myself a gold. Um, all the other characters slide down. And then I'm going to play... Now, I don't know what this one does, so I'm going to have to look it up. It says, hire any one visible townsfolk from the main board for free. That's correct. That's pretty good. Provided they, it's uh, available on the top five. <laughs> yeah, the problem is it's going to give me uh, a criminal. I didn't really want a criminal, so I'm going to play this one instead. I'm going to play the squire. Okay, so my movement is two. Uh, so I go one, two. Do I want to pay to move it extra? Nope, I do not. Okay. But what I am going to do is I am going to pay one to dismiss this townsfolk. So I pay one. No, that's the wrong way. Pay one to dismiss this, which means I get the ability printed in the top right. So I get to discard a card. And I've got an extra one icon for this turn. And the card I'm going to discard is this one. Yeah. I think that one. Right, so I am choosing the action to uh, place workers. So again, nobody's done this before. So you basically get to place one worker for each... No, no, no. It's a sliding it's, scale. Yeah, yeah, it's a sliding scale. So I've got one of these icons here, plus another icon because of the card that I dismissed. So that's two of them. I'm going to spend a gold to make it three. And then I'm going to spend another two gold to make it five. So basically, um, I've got five of them, which means I can place three workers. I don't think there's any way I can get three more. No. So I'm going to place three workers. And when you place workers, you always place them in the bottom level of the castle uh, based on where you are. Okay. And then after you've done that, if you have three or more in a section, one of them moves up. And you get this bonus that's printed here. So that, for me, is two virtue. There we go. Um, and then if there was st still three in a section, you would move up again, etc., etc. Mm, uh, no, you get to it's, move it's, sideways it's, on the first level. Like oh, that. sideways yeah. as well. If, so if one they goes also have three workers. Yeah. Right. So one goes up and the other two go to one side. Sideways. On the first level. Because on the second level, they don't. Unless the, the is telling us that no goes forward. And the others stay there. Right. So the action, the action is definitely says place workers. Yeah, rule book says place workers. But you're right, they are nobles. So, uh, right. Now, what happens next is I get to recruit 
if I want to. Uh, oh, I actually quite like this one. Uh, how much money have I got? Six. Yeah, go on. I'll spend three money. I'll recruit this one. Uh, and that has the ability that I can discard a card. So I will. Yeah, I'll discard that one. Right, and then I'm going to draw up. Now, I've only got one card. So does that mean I shuffle my deck? Uh, yep. Yes, Paul. Uh, if you had criminals on your board, you would get uh, to redo this action. That gives you corruption for each criminal symbol you've got. But only on my board, yeah? Yes. Okay. I don't have any on my board, so we're all good. And this is triggered at the beginning of your turn, but also when you shuffle? Yes. When you basically have to shuffle your deck again to collect cards. Right. Okay. okay. Be it an optional action or a required action. Actually, none of them are optional because even if you recruited this one, for, for example, the traitor over here, you would have to reshuffle. Uh, it's a forced reshuffle anyways. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I move everybody down. That didn't do what I wanted it to do. She was here. This fellow was here. Maybe I should have mixed them, but whatever. Um, and I think now is a good time to play Ada. She's the one that I drafted at the beginning. She's got a criminal symbol, which can be wild. Yep. Um, and her ongoing ability is whenever anybody has a virtue collision, I gain a virtue and a resource. Right. But you do but gain course, one corruption immediately for playing the card. Uh, yeah, that's part of this action right here. Yeah. The card that I, yeah, if I have any, then this goes forward. So I think we're at the point where lots of things are going to start colliding pretty quickly. Think so. Um, I'm going to move two spaces, but I hadn't worked out which two uh, yet. So Christopher in the chat has just mentioned something which does ring a bell for me. He said he thinks you get a virtue for having no criminals when you reshuffle. I do not know about that. Yeah, it's on the bottom of the reference card. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, so Free I get a virtue. Plus one it's actually correct, yeah. Ding. Virtue for no. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There you go. Uh, and that's when anybody reshuffles? No, that's when you reshuffle. But no, it's you when reshuffled, I reshuffled. And you reshuffled yeah. after the collision check phase, so you don't process that yet. Correct, yeah. Right. But that will happen okay. on my next turn. I guess I could trade for cat. No, I can't. I'd be going to this place. I can trade for inkwells. And I got rid of the hammer guy, which suddenly seems less smart. Let's trade for inkwells. Let's go over here. Um, and I have three plus one from the skull is four. She doesn't have any inkwells or skulls, so I can't dismiss her in order to use that ability. So I will have a total of four which means i can have two inkwells i could spend money to get more but i think i'm happy with two for now because it gives me three and there's still some three cost manuscripts around mm, so that is this action part and now i can hire the person that it's at the top of the deck and the woodcutter looks pretty good for three plus i get to rearrange so i'll spend three Yeah, I can and see how that higher. rearranging is quite useful now. Because I'm going to now rearrange these two. Because I want the corrupt person off of my board as soon as I'm done using her. Right, yeah. Because um, I, I know you're going to process your collision. I am, yes. And Mark may, may be on the way to doing his as well. I guess I could leave her in the middle. Yeah, let's do that. Let's leave her in the middle. And uh, and put that guy in the end because he gives me a free hire when he drops off. So we'll we'll let her idle for one turn, uh, and then I draw a card at the end of my go. Hand size four, right? Okay. So I think my best option right now, this guy comes here, here, here. I'm going to play. Um, hmm. Sometimes it does get difficult. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to play the criminal. Okay. Which, gives which you means I get one corruption. One corruption. 
But the criminal um, is a permanent wild card. So whichever action you do, you have exactly. plus one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move two. So it's one, two, which means I'm spending a coin. Yeah. And in the, I'm going to one sec. Yeah, instead of spending my ink wells, I'm going to hire that person. Uh, this one, this miss, sorry. Yeah. So that works that way, which means I get a free reshuffle. Uh, yeah, rearrange your cards, yeah. yeah. Rearrange, yeah. I'm going to re rearrange them uh, like so. Okay. That's not working, is it? That goes back there. Yeah. Okay. Next thing, I am going to, yeah, transcribe the manuscript. Okay. So, so I have one, bosses. two, three symbols. I have the third symbol from the one I discarded. Yeah. So that's now in my hand. I get yeah. a deed for that. And I will obviously not hire that one because I cannot. Got no and money. I have no clash. I'm just going to um, drop one card, which means I will get a corruption. Yeah. And it's your turn, Paul. Okay, right. So this falls off. Please slide down. Uh, how many inkwells have I got? I have two inkwells. You would like, have I got much stone? Yeah. Okay, so I think I'm going to play the stone cutter. Um, and then I'm going to have to move three. Ah, it's these icons. I don't want these icons. Pesky icons. Let's have a look. Let's have a look where we can get to. Can we get somewhere where there is a hammer symbol from where I am? One, two, three. No. Oh, you can pay silver to move it more, though, can't you? Mm-hmm. You can pay one per for extra steps. Oh, it might be five. Five seems r crazy. Yeah, we have a... This whole half of the board is trading, 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 yeah. trading. Okay, I'm not going to play the stone cutter. I'm going to play the journeyman instead. And... I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. You don't need to have a hammer symbol. Oh, you're talking about a character with a hammer symbol. Yeah, I need, I need three hammers to build something. I've My got apologies. one from a character, one from a stone, so I'm looking for a third one. Um, well, I are an illusionist. Yeah, but he's a criminal. Oh, yeah. you mean dismiss him? Yeah. And you get a free rearrange, Paul, which is excellent yeah. in your case. Actually, that, that's, that's quite good. So... So you can do it with the no, three no, no, I, no. I've changed my mind. I'm, I'm doing a journey, man, and I'm moving right. two, and I'm going one, two, and I'm not going to dismiss. I don't have any criminals. I now have one, two, three bags. I will spend a coin to make it four bags, which gets me two gold. Um, and then I'm going to spend two coins to recruit. No, I'm not going to spend two coins. I'm not going to recruit that one just yet. Right, so now we have our first uh, collision thing. So because it's my turn, my markers have met. I get everything printed above them and other players get what's printed below them. So if you two have at least one criminal, um, you both get a, a debt card, whereas I get three deeds. Thank you very much. Which is rather nice. I'm just going to put all my deeds in one pile if they're all the same way up. Yeah, that might be better. And a coin. Okay. 
So, uh, Jonathan in the chat is saying that you rearrange when you walk through yellow. I don't think that's true. The rules say that you only, uh, they get to rearrange when you end your move on their space. It is written uh, at the top of the guide card, in fact. Yep. Yeah. When you land over there. Yeah, you've got to, got to land on their space, not when you move through them. Um, and then I draw back up. So, that is me done. Oh, no, um, what happens after the collision is do my, my markers separate again? Mm -hmm. right. Yes. You reset them to the starting locations. Yeah. Done. Sorted. All right. So, at the beginning of my turn, this fellow slides off. And you he get... A, a virtue and a free purchase. So yep. I have a collision. Collision as well. Um, which fellow do I want to purchase? There's a different woodcutter. If everyone at home could see me, I'm tilting my head back and forth to be able to try to read the card. <laughs> uh, there's an awful lot of villainy going on on this board, isn't there? So right. if I were to take the peddler now, even though my markers have met, does that mean that the both of them move to the uh, in yes. the virtue direction? They move in unison after they hit each other until they are resolved. Right. Uh, so there's a, there's a message in the chat to say, Stevie, that you should have got a virtue and a resource. Oh, I sh that's the whole reason I played her. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> so those funny. would have those would have met uh, during your uh, your turn, and so now they'll move together. They would be here. They'll yeah. They'll be right here right now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the resource I want is, of course, another gold. Um, and the fellow that I will purchase for free will be this peddler. And he gives another virtue when he's acquired. So these two together should move now here. Nice. And then these will slide down. I'll play a character onto my board. It's going to be the Tinker. I have a criminal on my board, so I get one uh, corruption at this point. So we go back this way. Uh, I think you only get the corruption if you play a new criminal. Oh, all right. I think so. Learn something new every turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now I'm moving two spaces, mm -hmm. which is going to be one, two, and we're going to write a book about a cross. Yeah. Um, Do it. So I have one, one cross here on my Tinker card. This fellow doesn't have crosses, so I can't dismiss him. I need to discard two more. Just one. You have a wild symbol. Oh, got a criminal. thank you for catching that. Even better. One inkwell. It's a very big inkwell if you can make a whole book out of it. Uh, and then this fellow is going to come over here and be sat you a resource. somewhere. Uh, well, we've been in the habit of taking gold, but maybe a stone this time. Just for variety's sake. Um, now I can purchase the strong man. Have a look at this guy. It does look very strong. Two trade for a hammer. Well, I do have a lot of trade actions. I am also running out of money. We're gonna, we're gonna go for it. We're okay. gonna hire him because it gives me yet another virtue. And then we do your collision. Uh, we do my collision. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm all the way here on the oh, left. Oh, right. I'm obviously, the most virtuous. Yeah. Like one cash. And three deeds. Three deeds. I don't get any penalties because I don't have any criminals. Do you get any criminals, Mark? Oh, he does. Uh, yes, I do. So okay. I get uh, another debt. Oh, a debt. That's nice. It's another debt. <laughs> and at the end of my turn, I would resh I would draw, but I can't, so I have to do the reshuffling part. Which means. And and oh, these should have separated at the end of the collision, and yeah. that means that when I reshuffle, since corruption. I have a criminal, I yeah. get a corruption. So okay. I'm already one step along the way for next time. Right. Sorted. Okay, so this guy moves here. I get one virtue. So these move one to this side. I also get to hire one for free. Anyone? I will hire. Um, this one over here. Uh, I took a whole deck. This it's one. It's a good bargain to buy the whole deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For free, so I get another debt. 
racking up that debt. I'm even oh, that, going. That's not bad. That's not that uh, bad. Yeah, I'm going to play uh, this criminal. So these move twice this twice. way. Ouch. So once for that and once for that. And. Okay. I can move twice, right? Mm -hmm. One, two. Yep. So whatever action you do, you've got two wild cards already. Yeah, I'm going to transcribe the manuscript. Right. So that's free. That's a blue manuscript. And it lets me, um, what do you call it? Um, recruit I, a character for no cost. Recruit another one, yeah, for yeah. free. And I'm going to recruit. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm going to recruit uh, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Which means I get one virtue. Definitely recruiting a lot faster than we're destroying cards. Yeah. My deck is already very fat. Now I get the option to recruit, <laughs> but I don't have any cash. <laughs> and uh, so basically I resolve the collision, which means I get uh, two coins, a debt and a deed. And we can rearrange. That is correct. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, Ada here was supposed to trigger during my collision as well. My tokens were as far left as they could go, but I did not take the stone. So here's the stone for okay. the collision that happened on my turn, and I'll take another one for the collision that's happening now. Yeah, I'm going to reset the counters now and draw up to three cards again. Right, my go. So start with my go. This drops off, and I get a virtue, and I recruit a card for free. Um... Let me take. Oh gosh. I don't know. Uh... I'll take this one because that's another another virtue. Do you like me, virtue? Um. So everything slides to the right. I'm then going to play now then. Where am I and where do I want to go? That is the question. That's deep, man. Yeah. Um, I've got that. Got that. That would do that. That would do that. I think... Oh. Hmm. Let's have a look on this board about. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit short on the old money. Yeah, money's a bit, a bit of a struggle. So I'm going to play this one. Um, and I don't think I'm going to use any of its icons at all. <laughs> I think I'm just going to move three spaces. Um, how am I doing for ink wells? I got two. So we're going to go one, two. Mm -hmm. Three, and I'm then going to place workers, stroke nobles. Um, I've got one noble icon there, and I'm going to use two gold. That costs that's three in total, which allows me to place two workers, which go in the outer ring there. Um, that is that action done. I then recruit. If I want to, do I want to recruit this one? Uh, no, I don't want to recruit that one. Uh, my things haven't collided, so I draw one card and that is my go. Uh, Ellie's in the chat asking, is it four to six players? It's one to four players. There is a, there is a solo mode included in the game, which uh, Mark was telling me about earlier on. And I know Jonathan in the chat plays a lot solo. Um, but yeah, it's one to four players. As right. we said, the solo is very equal because there are uh, four solo players. Yeah. So I've moved my characters down. I play someone who's not a criminal, so I don't get a new mm -hmm. corruption. 
I've played the trader, which means I get one step. Come along here. I'm not, uh, I could hire that fellow for one and do a reshuffle, but uh, do I need that token? I don't think I need that token. I'm going to write another manuscript. The Tinker and Ada will work together with one more inkwell to buy the manuscript that is there, which lets me flip a deed or a debt. And thank thank you earlier for giving me this uh, debt token. Oh, because you can pay it off. And I'll take a stone. Um, and then I could hire the illusionist as much as I like a good magic trick. I'm hoping to have, well, he does discard two cards when you play him. Cycle through the good, the bad stuff faster. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. I'm talking myself into buying a lot of cards. It's usually not a great thing for a deck builder. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get a reshuffle now. I, I can't seem to get rid of this uh, criminal that just wants to live on my board forever. <laughs> That's how it is with a life of crime. Once you're in, you're in. Yeah, not doing um, any help. So I've purchased him, and I think all I have yet left to do is draw a card at the end of my turn. Okay. All right, Mark. Okay. This guy goes off. I get another debt. You get a debt and a coin. And a coin. How many deck cards um, have we got left? Eight, eight deck cards and eight deed cards. Remember, the end of the game is triggered when either one of those piles runs out. And I'm going to play the laborer. I'm going to move one, two, mm -hmm. and over there. I'm going to build uh, with yes. two symbols that I have over here and a and stone. Two. Three for a stone, yeah. So you can only build one of your workshops. I'm going to build over here, yeah. which allows me to flip a debt. Right, nice. And I get a free stone. Yeah. Back. And your hand size has gone up by one. That is correct. And one second. So we've not seen much in the way of buildings yet, but all of these buildings have special abilities whenever you, uh, whenever you unlock them. I'm going to buy, uh, sorry, recruits uh, this. Okay. What's, what's she get called? You a virtue, an aristocrat. Indeed. Right. And okay. I drop four cards now. Yeah. So just before the start of my turn, uh, I just wanted to mention that um, this video and a lot of the other content that I make, in fact, all of the other content that I'm making this month, uh, is only made possible through the support of the Patreon campaign. Both Stevie and Mark are patron supporters, and a lot of people watching the chat are patron supporters. Thank you very much. Um, I'm basically doing a whole load of live streams, all for January. Uh, none of it is sponsored or commissioned. Um, so yeah, it's funded through the Patreon. If you enjoy the videos, obviously, please give it a like. Um, and yeah, if you're in a position to be able to support me and help support the channel, feel free to do so. Also, if you use the YouTube Super Chat feature, all of that money goes to charity. So all of my ad revenue every month, I don't take a penny of it. All of that goes to charity. Uh, and anything I get in the Super Chat, that also goes to charity as well. So yeah, thank you very much for your support. Uh, meanwhile, my go. So this falls off. Please slide down. Now I, I'm full of criminals now. <laughs> so I think I probably need to actually play one of them. Yeah, I think let's play one of them. Right, so I gain one corruption because that is my first criminal, but I can recruit any character for free. Oh gosh, I see what you mean. Look at them all. <laughs> mm -hmm. they're all a bunch of criminals um so i think i've seen the error of my good ways and i'm going to go down the dark path uh, mm -hmm. although four criminals and one watchman yeah no i think i'm going to take this one uh anti-agonist so i'm going to recruit that one which means i move my corruption marker one forward uh right now i'm moving three spaces now i don't have any gold i do have three coins though so i can do some dismissing yes so i'm going to go one two three 
and then I am going to place some more nobles. So I've got one icon there, one icon there, and I'm going to spend one coin to dismiss this one, which is another icon. And that also gets me the ability of uh, shuffling my discard pile back in. Come on. There. Um, which I do now, I believe. That will get you one corruption, though. Paul. And that gets me one corruption because I've got a, a criminal on board. Look at this. Uh, but I've got three what's it points, which is basically two workers. So two workers go in here. And then because there's three in there, one goes up, one goes to the right, one goes to the left. And I get a stone and an inkwell. Stone and an inkwell. Um, my things have not collided. Oh, recruit. Do I want to recruit? Uh, no, I do not. Well, I can't. Um, and then I draw back up. I'm done. All right. While we're in the moment of saying things before we start our turns, I yep. would like to say on behalf of everyone in the Patreon channel, we are all pleased as punch to watch you playing games just for fun and sharing that with us. <laughs> uh, lockdown is tough, and it's yeah. like we get to play along. I'm very happy every time I get to participate, and I know everyone else is happy to watch you have a good time. Cool. Thank um, you very much. Now, in, in uh, the position of a player who has two yellow manuscripts, um, what does that one do? It gives you points according to the amount of those symbols you have in your deck at the end of the game. At the end of the game, in right. Okay. Deck at the end of the game. Yes. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah, and there is one for each uh, symbol, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right, then okay. I will move this fellow off of the track, and he gives me a gold when he departs my card row. I'm going to build a little house out of that gold. <laughs> um, and then these cards all slide down. And I want to hire, let's put our friend the diplomat out. Is that right? I think I need the trading symbol, yeah. So we put the diplomat out. Um, and that means I move once. So while the diplomat is in play, you can spend two coins to gain one of those icons. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there's no path up on this side. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Here it is. There. It is up. Here's one. And I have three symbols so I could scrap a character if I stayed here, which would give me some cash awful tempting but i'm actually going to pay one to move to this space oh and pay another one for an extra trade so that i can pick up two inkwells i believe i have a total of four inkwells at the moment i count three but is one buried uh I'm sorry, I have four trade bags that I used to get oh, sorry, two yeah. Yeah. giving me a total of three, yes. Yeah. Um, and I don't have the money uh, or the desire to hire the trader. It seems like a bad idea to have one of those in your deck. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the clue's in the name. <laughs> exactly. I'm, uh, I'm done for the turn. Okay, so I'm going to move. It's like, no, 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 I'm here to apply for the job. Which job would that be? Uh, the job of traitor. Oh, yes, please, please just take a seat. <laughs> I'm Mr. Arnold, to... we'll see you now. <laughs> I'm going to play the trader. Um, I'm going to move one step here. I am going to um, hmm, pay one stone to build another building. Right. Over there. And so which flip another building. Built, now? built this one. Yeah. I get another stone back. Um, no, actually, I'm going to take a gold this time instead. Okay. Basically, what this uh, building does is for every, when there is a collision, I gain one virtue. Okay. Any, any collision. Now, after that, I... No, okay. Yeah, I'm done. Basically, just uh, drop to four. Okay. So this one's going to slide off. 
these are going to slide down. And I'm going to play the lender. Okay, so I move one, and I'm going to move up here, and then I'm going to trade. So I have one, two, three, four, five trade icons. And I'm not going to dismiss that one. It's not worth it. I am just going to spend an extra one silver to make it six trade icons, which gets me three gold. There we go. Um, that's that done. That's that done. I do not want to recruit. I can't because I can't afford it. I haven't collided. I draw a card. Done. There you go. It goes a lot smoother and quicker once you, uh, once you get used to it. Ada is falling off of the track, finally. I have three... Oh, that criminal woman who's been rearranging herself. <laughs> yeah, she's been running the whole Enterprise for a while now. Yeah. Um... I think I've made a bit of a boo-boo, however and not having enough money to pull off what I'm hoping to do. So let's do something else. Let's, how far would that take me? Yeah, that seems fine. All right, so we'll play the woodcutter here. She'll take me three steps. One, two, three. Um, and now I can build stuff, um, and I have one hammer available, so I can build, let's check now, that one moves you faster, this one says it's always a penny to dismiss people, each, each give you bonuses for those actions, mm -hmm. I think what I want is this one, which would okay. cost me five because it's the second one from that batch no it's always so three. Oh, no, still three still three. Oh, still three yeah the yeah. number of points that they're worth oh yeah. this is All the right. points well, they're worth depending on how more many stone than I needed. yeah All right i'll spend three to build this one so the one from the woodcutter and then these two yep not three two And uh, yeah, I've built that, and I've built it in a spot that lets me hire anybody I want. Nice. Uh, you also got to get to destroy one card. Yes, and I'll destroy destroy one card for my hand and get money for it. Yeah. Mm, we're gonna. Yeah. So if if one player has much... both buildings on either side of a link, they only get the bonus once. But if it was two different players, both players would get the bonus. I'll destroy the laborer here, and he gives me two coins because he has two coins on him. And uh, the character that I will hire for free is um, the artisan. And he lets me discard someone from my hand. Let's discard that thief. We're, we're, we're not following Paul. We're going into the light, moving away from that life of crime. <laughs> Well, I started out in the light, but we were out there. We were in the life of crime for a second. We dipped our toes. Um, here's another criminal that gets you virtue. That's such a fun idea. But I think I want to keep the card that I have, so I'm not going to hire the conspirator, and mm, just drop and be done with my turn. Me. Okay, so I'm going to move this one. Gives me a debt and a deed. I'm going to play uh, the financier. Two coins, one discard. I'm going to discard. Discard. So next, I'm going to move three spaces. One, two, three over here. And the next thing I'm going to do is build. I have one symbol. Oh, I miscalculated that one actually. 
So no quite got enough of it. Yeah. So instead I'm just going to trade to destroy okay. a card. So I spent one coin because I have two symbols. I get the coin back because of the trader. Yeah. And I will yeah, I will destroy this card to get the two coins. Okay. I cannot recruit, right? Yeah, I can recruit, but... Okay. No clashes. No, I'm just drawing up, yeah. Your turn, Paul. Okay, well, you're reshuffling, aren't you? So you will get a Virtue. No, you get two Virtue. Why, why two? Yeah, two Virtue. That's, no, one Virtue. That's when a, when a collision occurs. Oh, sorry, yes. Right, so this one drops off and I get two stone. Uh, these move down. I am then going to play... I had a plan. I think it was this one. Yeah, so I'm going to play that. No immediate bonus. I move two spaces, which will be one, two. I am then going to transcribe this manuscript. I'm going to use one cross from there, one criminal wildcard from there, and two inkwells for this one. Now this bonus is, I get to place two nobles. And it says, in any, place the indicated number of workers for free on any one first tier section of the castle. So, yeah, I can put these wherever I want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them both in here. Okay. So one of them moves up, I get two virtue, so that goes on there, and then they both move to there, uh, and then that one moves to there, and that one moves to there, and that was my action, which means uh, I could recruit, but no, it's too expensive. Um, so because there's been a collision, it actually resolves now. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, fun. Yeah. So you two, if you've got a criminal, you both get a corruption. Nope, sorry. I get nope. one coin and yet another deed. And then those... the deeds are down to six while the debts are at seven, so they're still yeah. relatively in sync. Uh, so that's that done, that's that done, that's that done, and I draw a card. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You two do know about this bit in the middle of the board, yeah? Yeah. Just check in. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be all that useful. But, yeah, but it's pretty. Uh, yeah, it. it looks pretty, so that's where I'm going that's anyway. True. That's true. Move my characters down. Can't seem to get everything that I want out of this. Hmm. Could just do that. Then what would I... Yeah, that's probably fine. Hmm. We're going to play the strongman. Um, he's going to move me two spaces. We're going to come here, and I could hire that scoundrel for a, for one. I have one hammer already. That would be two. Three, if you count the trade bags on the strongman, that would be four, and some stone. So, yeah, let's hire her for one. A dismiss, I should I should say, to use the. So, do I get a corruption when I dismiss a, a, a criminal? No, I just get the. Uh, no, you just uh, you get the ability to discard, and you get the same. Yeah, so I will discard a peddler. I don't need him right now. And so she had one criminal symbol. Uh, there's a hammer for two. Uh, the strongman let, lets me trade uh, trade bags for uh, hammers, so that's three. Um, 
and then we're going to do four and five. And we are going to take this symbol here. Now, this one is uh, the trading action. I have two more bags, but only when I'm taking the trading action, correct? Yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd rather have the faster movement. Yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do the third option because I'm very indecisive today, um, and we're gonna place that there. So Ooh, yellow and I nice. each get to place the fellow into the into the castle. I got to place one as well, right? Yep. Uh, so, so that's not placed into the castle, unfortunately. That's just moving one. We it's cannot do that. Moving one. <laughs> oh, it's moving one. There's little yeah. arrows on it. Isn't it the same icon as the? No. Oh, there are arrows. There's little yeah, arrows. Yeah, we only get one virtue. Yeah. Well, that's my whole turn messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Just like my previous turn, you have to think on this game. <laughs> There's so much to do. So little time. Well, poop. I guess I don't get that bonus. I get that bonus, though, which is to scrap somebody. We're going to scrap... the habit uh, and take two coins and we're going to spend then three of them to hire the deacon who lets me reshuffle my cards and do that now I get the ability here of the woodcutter uh, which lets me discard or trash somebody when I build. When you build, and I just yeah. Build, yeah. So let's discard the journeyman. I don't think I'm ready to blow him up. Um, but that means my hand is empty, and at the end of my turn, I will reshuffle. And I don't have any criminals, so I don't get you, any. You get, I a get a virtue when I reshuffle. Yes. All right, Mark. Hmm. Okay, so the laborer goes off. Uh, I'm moving the other ones. I am playing. Hmm. Five. Yeah, I'm playing this guy here. I get uh, to move three spaces, which is one, two, three. I am going to convert, uh, transcribe the manuscript. I have two symbols there. I am going to use obviously another one. So that makes it three. So nice. I get this one. And that moves your corruption and your virtue. And virtue. Yeah, correct. And okay. the effect on this guy is when you transcribe the manuscript, your corruption moves one to the right. Oh dear. We got another collision. Yep. Oh, and lovely. now I can let me just flip this one. Yeah, I could recruit this guy, but I do not need to. And I'm going to resolve the collision now. Mm -hmm. Now, when I resolve the collision, I move one to the right because of this effect. Because you have no criminals, yeah. No, it's yeah, exactly because I have no criminals as well. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, I get two deeds and a coin, and if you have any criminals, you get one corruption. Unfortunately, do. Ouch. Right. That's two. So we're down to four deeds. And a coin. There you go. Um, I'm done. Yep. Okay. So. And I'll drop the cards. Yep. That one drops off. That one moves to there. That one moves to there. I'm going to play. Well, I did have a plan. I need a new plan. Um, There's yeah. always that table flip button at the top of the screen if you need a plan. <laughs> um, I think oh, I was going to trade. I'll trade. I'm playing this card. I've got one movement uh, where I will move up to here. And with three icons, which I have, I can destroy a card. 
Um, now, if you destroy a card, you get the money from it, don't you? Yep. Yep. And it, it sort of thins your deck out a bit. Mm -hmm. so, exactly. Um, yeah, it's a really good card, this, but... And you can, oh, you can either do it from the top of your deck or from your hand. Right. Yeah. I don't know what's on the top of my deck. So I'm just going to get rid of that one. Uh, we'll get rid of that one. We get one coin. There we go. Um, and I think that's it. Three trade icons. Oh, and every time I trade, I get a uh, silver. So there we go. So we've gone up to four. And... Oh, did I want to dismiss the character? No. Do I want to recruit the character? Uh, no, I do not. So that's the end of my go. I'll draw two cards. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's more like it. Oh, yes. Yeah. I don't know what I want to do. I am looking, but nothing is really jumping out at me just now um i do have some build opportunity available anyway she moves away thank you for your service miss woodcutter let's put out the illusionist discard two cards or do a rearrange oh i'm doing it wrong no i lied I'm just going to show you the illusionist. I'm going to do the journeyman. Um, so he doesn't give me anything when he comes out, but maybe you can see what I'm going to do next turn. Um, the journeyman means that I move two steps. And we're going to go... Is it... No, I can't get six. I can do this. And I can do more building. Um, and because of the strong man, I can turn two bags into a hammer. So even though I have no hammers, I still have two visible here. And I'm one short and I can't buy them right now. But I can pay one coin. Oh, you've got the wrong thing. Gosh darn it. Tripping all over this, being short by one. Yeah. Mm. Sign of a good game. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. You usually a sign that, that the that things are put together well. Yeah. Oh, I'm just one short. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, we're going to buy gold instead then, because I can't find a third one. A third. See, she's got my third hammer. If I could have rearranged during your collision, that would have made things a lot nicer. But I don't think I can get anything else that I need, so I'll take more gold that I haven't spent yet. But just you wait. It's going to be good. There's a lot of gold coming. Um, apparently, that's the action there. And I could hire the... What is he? Overseer? The Overseer. And that would get me a reshuffle. But I don't think I need one now. So mm -hmm. I will pass on that. Very red lipstick. Just draw a card. That was a poopy one. Okay, I'm going to start moving. I'm going to play uh, the lender. I'm going to pay an extra coin. I'm going to move one, two. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trade for uh, inkwells. I'm going to spend an extra coin so that I can trade for two inkwells. Nice. Lots of inkwells. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, that's my turn, actually. Okay. Uh, so this goes off and I can flip uh, a debt or a deed. So I'll flip a deed over. Um, this slide down. We are then going to play this card because it's awesome. Um, yeah, I've got three movement points. And uh, yeah, where are we? We're here. So I'm going one two three and i am then going to place nobles i have one icon oh uh what's the icon here oh it is it is that one right i am going to spend two silver dismiss this 
um, which gets me basically a wild card action for this turn. I also get to discard a card. So I'm going to discard. Oh, well, that was really good. <laughs> uh... Um, Paul, it, yep. the discard the discard is optional. It's in the page of the rule book. That's all. Yeah, open. I'm just. Uh... No, I, I, oh dear. I don't know whether to discard it or not. Um, no, I'm not going to discard. Um, where was we? No, nobles, that was it. So I've got one, two from the card that I dismissed. Three, four, five is basically three nobles. Okay, so three nobles are going to go in here. Now, is that all right? Yep. yep. Now you need to start yeah. uh, checking yeah. for sections with three workers. Because no I just I just reread this a minute ago, and yeah. So if you now have three or more of your own workers in the first tier, you place them around. Right. Okay. Yeah. So one goes up. This fellow goes here. Yeah, and, you can and then hire these two go to the three, side, and they go out like no, this. Just, okay. just one. Yeah. yeah. And then I get to do this ability, which is hire yeah, somebody for free, recruit one for free, or, or destroy, destroy a card. A card. So at this point, I think I will hire somebody for free. Uh, and I'm going to hire... Uh, is it a bit late for the Overseer? Because that will again give me two, which is actually no good. So... Well, it's either the Overseer or the Chevalier and both of them. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll take this one. I'll recruit that one for free. Enough, Paul, you could get both. Say again? Interestingly enough, you could get both because the way the castle works. Oh, that's you, true. Once this one comes up, you yeah. can actually move a worker instead of getting the gold. So I've recruited that one. That allows me to discard a card, which I'm not going to do. And now I've got three in here. So again, one moves up, that one moves to there. That one moves to there, and I get this ability, which is gain a gold or move a worker. A worker on the bottom floor. On the bottom floor. So I am going to move this one to here. Nice. Okay, now I've got three here. So that one goes up, that one goes to there, that one goes to there, and I can flip over another one of these. Okay, and then I've got three here. And again, one goes up, one goes that way, one goes that way. And I can recruit again or destroy a card. Um, yeah, so I'm a bit short on the old money. So I, I am going to destroy this card now. So I destroy a card and I get three coins. There we go. One, two, three. Okay, so yeah, pretty happy with that. That was a, that was a good turn. Um, I can now recruit this character. Now, what does that do? That flips a debt and flips a deed? No. No. Whenever you flip a debt, you can flip a deed as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's no good for me. So no, I'm not going to recruit, and I draw two cards. Done. All right. The diplomat falls off the bottom. Has no ability anymore. These two fellows come out, and the illusionist will join. That gives me a corruption. And when I play him, I can do a rearrangey. Mm-hmm. So we want to put the journeyman in the end of the row, like this. And yeah, we'll leave the illusionist out like that. So that's that part done. I get to move one, but I'm going to pay a coin to move an extra and come out you here. You actually paid two the... coins, right? You had five, right? Uh, I accidentally clicked up yeah. and then down twice. So okay. I okay. paid one, one in net. Um, that happens to me all the time on this mod. <laughs> yeah, and I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, and can pay another coin for six total bags, which means I can axe two people. We're gonna get rid of the trader and the peddler. More money. Total of four coins. We should be at six, and they should go in there, and. Then I could hire, you know what, instead of paying the coin for the bag, I'm going to pay the coin to dismiss yep. this townsfolk. 
because I can use the, the skull as the extra icon. Because all your this. dismisses cost one because of this. Exactly. Special yes. ability. Yep. And now I can hire the overseer, and I think I will. You do get a corruption, though, for doing uh, the dismissal. I thought you didn't get a corruption for dismissing a, a thief. I well, asked that earlier. Let me just show you the card again. It was this one, right? Yeah. Oh, so, this uh, this action. Yeah, 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 there. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's fine with me. Oh, for dismissing. Um, them, yeah. Yeah, you do the play the player dismiss action. Yes. Um, but I'm going to hire this uh, this version of the overseer who gives me a virtue. So it all it all works out in the end, right? Yeah. Um, and when I hire someone, I can discard someone if I want to. Um, I have five left, and I just hired. Is my my woodcutter still down there? Isn't she? Yeah, I want to see her again soon, so I will discard from the top of my deck. Yeah, we didn't need her right away. That's fine. And then I will drop at the end of my turn. Okay. You ever draw a card and you're like, when did I hire your ugly face? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I said I played the patron, and I was like, "Well, this is an awesome card." I don't remember recruiting it, but obviously I did. Well, you were talking earlier about how you love your patron so dearly, so that's, that's... true. That's true. Yeah. Two, three, yeah. So I'm moving this one here, and this one here, and this one here. Should I or should I not? Mm. I guess I should. So I'm going to play that one. Yeah. I'm going to move one, two, three. I'm going to spend my three gold. Oh, that did not work. There you go. And uh, I'm going to... Use my two icons and three gold to place three workers. Over there. Aha! We have an intruder okay. in the castle. <laughs> okay, that's not working right. There you go. And there you go. And I'm going to flip a debt. Mm -hmm. Which gets me a resource. And... I am taking a stone. Am I going to recruit? I guess I'm not. Your time point. Okay, so you'll like this. That's a lot. So they go there. I'm going to play the antagonist and get two corruption. Ooh. Um. But then I'm going to move three spaces and I'm going to go, I'm going to take the scenic route. We're going to go over here. Then we're going to go over here. Then we're going to go down here. Um, and then I'm going to place some more nobly workers. So that I've got two criminal icons there, one icon there. That means I get to place two workers. One, two. I'm not going to uh, dismiss. So two go in there. Oh, yeah. One moves up to there straight away me two virtue uh, and then that one moves to there and that one moves to there and now I believe I have three in here so one goes up to the middle I become the king of the castle um, and I also get a resource and I will take a stone so my hand size is now permanently one extra um okay uh that's that done what's that recruiting do i want to recruit this one um no no i don't think i do so i will draw up to hand size of four uh that's me done mm -hmm. quick check on the cards still four and seven but i think the i think our virtue markers are going to be meeting soon so oh yeah yeah Mine is colliding right now. Yeah. 
uh, as a result of the journey. Oh, I get a debt from the antagonist. Thank you. I did. I did know that, and then forgot all about it. I get to hire for free. Mm, let's hire. Yeah, let's just do it. Let's hire the overseer. Lots of overseers going on all of a sudden. These fellows slide down. We're going to play the tinker. He's going to move us twice to here. That's not you. Why? That's not me. No. No wonder. <laughs> yes, that's why I was wondering. All right, so move to once over and down now. Uh, here we go. Um, How much gold? We have... <laughs> oh, no. Uh, not yet. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, manuscripts to write first. We have uh, one cross, one skull, which apparently are equivalent, and three ink wells. So which... the bit in the rules that we've not seen yet is after you've done all of your castle movements, if there is any section of the castle with more than three workers in, uh, the excess ones get literally thrown out of the castle. Oh, really? Yeah. We've not okay. seen that yet. But, but people yeah, do get benefit from it. Uh, that's my third yellow manuscript. So I get the, uh, the nice. I don't know what that is, chapel, castle tower. I've built a church. Yep. Something having to do with manuscripts. Um, and then I... It is a cleric bonus card. Go. Sounds lovely. Um, and then I can hire this person. Mm, I passed her up the last time. The traitor, I think yeah. I'm gonna pa I, I think I'm going to pass her up again. Um, but that means it is time to resolve my uh, collision here. Right. So I get two, co two coins, a debt, and a deed. And we can rearrange. And you can each rearrange, yes. I didn't take my deed. Oh, which here. means I could get rid of that. Oh, but then the longer it stays on, it's more wild cards. And then I draw one oh, wow. and end my turn. Okay. Okay, so I'm moving this guy here. Um, let's me flip a deed. Wait, I flipped the whole deck. That doesn't work. <laughs> And I get a free resource for that. I will take a stone. These guys move here. I forgot one thing uh, last time when I placed the workers. I'm not sure if I moved my corruption marker. Most probably I did not because it's at the max. This guy makes me move my corruption marker. But only when you place workers. That's if right. You... I placed them over Which here. Remember before? Right. Yeah. 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 So uh, this time I'm going to. Okay. I need to play this properly. Yeah, I have to. So I'm going to play, is it this one or the other one? Yeah, this one. Which lets me destroy a card or discard a card. I am going to destroy this card, the thief. So I get one coin. I am moving two to here i'm going to transcribe a manuscript that means i need seven, seven. crosses wow i have two here and five five ink wells ink... yeah now that manuscript lets me place four workers in any of the bottom four sections workers in any one yeah yeah bottom section Yes. Yeah, that okay, I should have right. It's all going to kick off here. Yeah, and I'm going to place them over there. Okay. And manage to. One goes here, one goes here, one goes up. Yep. And that lets me flip another deed. Or debt, yep. Which gets you another resource. That time, and yeah. And I get a resource. I am going to uh, take a stone. Right. Now, once you've finished all your movement, which you have, we now need to kick out workers from here or here. Sorry, here and here. But you can choose yeah. who gets kicked out. But the player that who gets correct. kicked out gets two coins. 
Yeah. I'm sorry it's going to be your workers, Paul. That's fine. So that's one. Does that mean you get four coins then? I get four coins. Yeah. Yes. How nice is that? I'd have preferred the well, workers. He lost two <laughs> points. Because at the end of the game, they caught, they, um, they're one point each. Are these worth the not, Right, okay. Not very mixed is what you're saying. Oh yeah, one, two, and three points. Yeah, see that. Uh, it's your turn, Paul. Okay. I'm just going to draw. Right, so this one goes off and I get two gold. I also got another corruption because I uh, transcribed the manuscript. This one slides down, this one slides down. Right, so. Uh, plan. Plan time. Uh, it's probably going to be build, although I've got, I think I'm, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, I can do it. Right, so this is going on here. Um, I'm going to move two. So that will be, oh, there's no link here. Oh, terrible. Um, I'll go one, two. And I will build. So I've got one building icon, two, three. I will spend a coin to dismiss this one. Are you sure you want to do that? No, if I do that, I have to reshuffle all my cards, don't I? Yeah, so forget yep. that. The so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to build one of the big ones. Um, and I'm going to build the one that gives me... Um, oh, gosh. Technically, you're choosing about... Uh, it's either one of the three symbols. Sorry, yeah, it's one of those three, isn't it? Um, I think I'm going to take the one that requires... Uh, I'm going to take this one. Yeah. And I'm going to build it here which gets me a virtue, which means I'm going to have a collision. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Oh, and whenever I build, I get a virtue. That's it. I knew, I knew there was a plan. I knew there was a plan. Right. I think that's it. I think that's my building done. I've built that. That was that action. So now I can recruit the character, but I don't want to. And now we resolve my collision. So I get a deed card. I get a corruption. Uh, and I get Do a coin. Get... And oh, yeah, you two, if you have a criminal, you get a corruption. Yeah, I don't. Okay. Right. Okay. Nice. Um, is that everything? I think that is everything. And then I draw a card. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. You don't reshuffle your deck until you need to draw a card, is that right? That is correct, but at the end of the turn you will need to refill your hand. Yeah, which I've done. Yeah. Okay, you managed exactly. <laughs> yeah. Strong man drops off the illusionist and the tinker slide down. So we have two deed cards left. Play the artisan this turn. He lets me move three. Uh, one two, three. Um, I am going to dismiss this fellow here for the extra symbol, and that means I reshuffle my deck, which means mm -hmm. I gain a corruption because I have a criminal. Okay, yeah. But I wanted the symbol. So I got one from him, and now it's time to start putting guys into the okay. castle, I think. So this means this flirtily gives me two yep. and three, four, five. Gets you three so noble I'll drop workers. Drop three into the bucket, yes. Yeah. One, two, three. You might as well and just they have drop to go them. in the section that I'm in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one will end up over here, one will end up over there. Yeah. And one will be here, and, and I'll get, get a stone or an inkwell. Hmm. Both. Oh, both. Both. Yeah, yeah. there's no slash. Por que no los dos? And um, there are now no areas with more than three in. So. I guess not. Um, and now I have the opportunity to purchase this benefactor, 
who will get me a virtue. So that sounds like a lovely plan. Okay. Nice. And when I purchase someone, I can discard someone from my hand. And then I can draw up to four and end my turn. Okay, so I'm going to move this one here, this one here, this one here, and I am going to play. Hmm, where do I want to go? Well, am I playing carry or there? Oh, this really gets tricky. <sighs> Yep, I'm playing the aristocrat. Bonus oh. points for anyone in the stream who just made the hand gesture and snapped their fingers. <laughs> I am going to... Um, I'm looking at what one. the card does. I'm trying to work out what this one does. I think it's end of game points. I am going to move uh, one, two, three, four. Which means I get to pay those two coins back. And I get to build. For. Yeah, let's just build the five. So it's one symbol I've got. Four stone. Which means I can take one of these buildings. And I'm nice. taking this one, putting it over there. I'm going to flip another debt. Okay. I and get an inkwell. And I am not recruiting, no clashes, and this is gonna draw up. Okay. Falls off. Down. I'm gonna play. Uh, what was it I was gonna play? Oh. Uh, I think I'm gonna play Briar. So when I play it, I get a virtue. Um, I then move two spaces, which is going to be one, two. And I then try to generate five inkwells, which I think I've got. Because I've got two criminals, one from the friar, one from my ability, and I spend the inkwell. And that gets me this tile, which I think is at the end of the game, I get one point for every two resources that I've got. Yeah, I think that's right. It does. There you go. And that's that. Do I want to recruit this character? Uh, oh, not sure actually. I don't think I do. No, I mean, I could have dismissed that. No, 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 I don't want to do that. So, yeah, that's me done. Um, I need to draw one card. I don't have any cards in hand so I do that do that draw me one card and gain a corruption because I have a criminal right done you'll go Stevie illusionist falls off these two fellows make room for the woodcutter who will be drawn we move three spaces one two three that's the wrong way <laughs> yeah one, but you can do it anyways yeah you go up there two yeah. three yeah mm -hmm. that's right um or one two three which i think is better nice yeah let's do that um and then we're going to do hammering things so we have three hammers visible which is enough to build the last building from this section and we're going to put it here in a spot that gets me a deed which is the second to last one yeah there is one deed, deed left deed. um indeedy then i again i keep coming back to this trader and I ask her, why do you tempt me so? Um, I would like to hire somebody just to be able to discard a card, but I don't think that's going to work this time. So I will draw up and be done. Could you possibly be a little less traitorous? <laughs> I know, right? 
or or at least entice someone else. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, so right. this guy's gonna fall off. This guy moves here. Hmm. Yeah. Playing that one. I'm gonna move one. I'm gonna get myself uh, two inkwells on sec. Three inkwells. Is it four? Yeah, let's make it four in close. And I guess that's it, right? Yep, that's it. Just gonna drop. Okay, so the antagonist falls off. Good job. Uh, now, building stuff. Probably need another laborer to get the three things. So although it's not a great card, I think it might have to be the laborer. Laborer, I move two. Where am I? I'm here. So I'm going to go. Uh, oh, I don't want to go up there. That's a, that's a bad place. So I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to end my move on your base mark. Mm -hmm. Can I rearrange? You can, you can rearrange. Thank you. Um, and then I'm going to build a building. So it's one hammer, two hammer, and a piece of stone for one of these buildings. And it's going to be... Yeah, that one. And I'm going to put it on here, which gets me a virtue. I don't know if virtue is going to work out to be any worth any points at the end of the game. Well, I've done it anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I think that's it. I put that down. I did the action. There isn't a collision. Uh, did I want to recruit? Um, actually, yes. Yeah, let's, let's recruit. So let's spend two coins to recruit Your this. Your true colors are finally showing. Say again? Your true colors are finally showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when I recruit it, I get to reshuffle my deck, and because I've got no criminals, I get a virtue. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm thinking. Goes there. Now, does that happen after you've recruited it or before? I believe you have to recruit it first for the the recruitment action to be played, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, Brett in the chat is saying you get another uh, virtue for building. Oh, of course, of yeah, that's why I did it. Yeah, I remember now. Right, there we go. Yeah, so I got my virtue up quite high. Uh, and then that's it for me. Yeah. Oh, the chat right. on the screen is broken. Thank you for letting me know, Brett. It does that now and again. And I have again, to Again, the gold when the tinker leaves the row. And these okay. fellows slide that down. That is back. Yeah, thank you for letting me know because I can't see that while I'm... Uh, I've got two windows open. I've got Tabletop Simulator on the left, and I've got the actual YouTube chat on the right. I guess what I could do is I could have the stream showing, and then I could put Tabletop Simulator over there. Yeah, I could do that. That would work, and then I should see when the chat dies. Okay, cool. I'm going to play the Strongman again. He's come he's out a few times, hasn't he? He stuck around for a while when I played him last. We're going to move twice. So this building spot here is associated with my current position, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, because yeah. it's that's, this that's side of the river. Yeah. Yes. Um, right, so I've played the strongman. I've moved twice. Now it's time to see if I want to hire this guy, and he's going to give me a corruption if I pay him a dollar. Well... That is so nice of him, but I'm going to decline. Um, and we are going to build again. I have two hammers, and I can use bags as hammers for a third. And I have a stone here. Maybe I do need to hire that fellow then. 
Yep, we have to pay a coin to hire him because I need his skull. The kind of things you say when you play board games. Mm -hmm. um, so I get a corruption. Give me your skull. And that gives me a fourth bag, which translates to a second hammer, which totals for four hammers plus the... Uh... No, I just take it as a hammer. I'm sorry. Hammer, hammer. Two bags equals a hammer for three. Where did I get the fifth one? Stone. All oh, right. Yep. Yeah, correct. And the and stone. Five I hammers. Well. Yeah. So I can build uh, this one that gives me a movement bonus. Yeah. And I can use it to claim the final deed. Which triggers the end of the game. We can continue to take deeds. They just come from the supply. They come but from the supply. We will finish this round. And I believe I was the last player in the round. So the round is over. We now play one more round, which is basically one turn left each, and then the game's over. And I could hire this fellow if I wanted to. I don't think there's anything that inherently gives me any points for doing so, though. Okay. Um, but I would get to reshuffle, which would give me a virtue. Is that worth doing? So oh, and when I build, I could... Go on. Uh, when I build, I get to um, axe someone from my hand. Right. So in, in the physical board game, these deeds and debts, you basically have this divider card and you have some on top and some below. Uh, and the end of the game is triggered when this card is revealed and then you, can, then you basically flip it over. But obviously in Tabletop Simulator, it's just easier to have you know, from there. So, yeah, I'll okay. pass. I'll pass right. on the recruit. We are on and... our last turns. Off you go, Mark. Your final turn of the game. Okay, so this one goes here. I'm going to flip a deed. I think I know what I'm doing. These guys move here. And now I have to check who I'm going to play. Yeah, I'm going to have to do this. So it's I'm playing this one here. Which lets me move one, two, three, and four. Okay. Because I'm paying one coin. Yep. I'm using her symbol and the five inkwells. Nice. Something big. It's a big one. And. Not as big as that one, though. Oh, yeah, this on, is one point. I've been better for all that one, but I had to take it. Ah, so what, what is this then? This is one point for each worker you have in the castle. For each two workers. Each two workers in the castle. Oh, I could have done yeah. with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, let me check something. Yeah. yeah. I think I've taken that's the one that gets me no points at the end of the game. You know, because that's, <laughs> that's what nope. I do. Oh man, yeah, that gives you uh, one for each two resources. Exactly, and I'm about to spend my two gold, so. Oh no. Your turn. Okay. So, say goodbye to the woodcutter. Do me proud. Um, can I just check what happens at the end of the game with respect to your virtue markers and your corruption markers? I mean, unless they clashed, it's nothing, basically. Okay, so I probably should try to get myself one virtue this turn. Yeah, or right. two. <laughs> or two. Um, yeah. yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to play the squire, I think. Yeah. Uh, so I'm moving two spaces, which will be one, two. Three spaces, Paul, <laughs> to get your two virtue. And you have coins to do so. Yeah, where can I get the two virtue from? From the castle, uh, second level. This next one, yeah. Yeah, so I spend another coin move to here and then i recruit using that two gold place two workers and put them in here and then that explodes that one goes up to there that one goes to there that one goes to there i get two virtue so one two um then there's three in here so one of those goes up and i get a resource yay resource so that was a <laughs> as well quite matter and then there are more than three in here so we'll kick out yours andrew not andrew mark sorry uh, you. there you go <laughs> you get two coins two coins yeah um and i think 
That is my go done. No, nope. you have to nope. resolve the clash. Oh yeah, resolve my thing. So I get three deeds and a coin, and you two both get a debt if you have corruption. Oh, sorry, if you have a criminal. I do not have a visible criminal. That was close. <laughs> I only have invisible criminals. So, yeah, one, two, there you go. Three more deeds. Ah, oh, very nice. Okay, yeah. Happy with that? Um, I get a virtue when there's any collision um, if I have no criminals, so I'll take okay. that. I probably um, missed that once earlier, but um, we'll go back to the tape and look at it again. Um, the artisan is going to fall off and flip my last debt over, giving me a resource, which will be a gold, because we're going to be flooding the palace on the last turn. I think there's a lot of flooding the palace on the last turn. Well, this is the last turn. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And the overseer comes out, um, so I can move twice. This is the section of the palace that I want to be in, I oh, think. Oh, I get to rearrange. Awesome. I'm not sure it's going to help you much. <laughs> no, but I want to do it. There you go. Um, fair enough. So then hiring this fellow is going to give me a reshuffle, which would give me a virtue. So I'll pay a coin to do that. He's been dismissed. I get a reshuffle of these cards. And because I have no criminals, I get a virtue. Then uh, we're going to do palace action. So we have one, one noble symbol there, one two. noble symbol there, um, and six gold. So I get to do four duders into the palace. Yeah. Four fine fellows. Is that four or five? That's five. Get back in there. Okay. And they all go about like that. Yeah. And then one will advance. Oh, not all of you. One oh, step yeah. forward. Thank you. Oh, no, no. One goes this way. One goes this way. And, you get and I get virtue. two virtue for this. And this guy also gives me a virtue. Yeah. Nice. So that's one, two, mm. three. And um, then I can hire someone. But that guy doesn't give me any points at the end. So I'm not going to bother. You get two deeds and a coin. Yeah. Okay. I'll probably be last place, but I did have a great time. Right. We are done. So let's go through the final scoring. Um... If you want, Paul, I have the uh, Garfield app. We can just use that one. Oh, you, you've got an app, have you? Yeah, they, it's an official app, basically. And nice. It's really good to count the points in these okay. games. Right. So essentially, the first one is uh, points for each set uh, of buildings constructed. If you have one building, it's the first number. If it's two buildings from each set of three. Yeah. So they're divided into sets of three. So, so for example, I have five points and four points. Well, we've it's actually nine. got we've actually got a points counter here, so we can just use this. Yeah, 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 yeah the audience so. can see yeah. it too. Yeah. So I got eight because I've got one of those and one of those. So eight points. I've yeah. got I'll go through the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Two from the first section and all three from the last section for 18 points. Oh, apparently somebody needs to get kicked out of the castle. They do. Well spotted. There are four in mm -hmm. here. Aha. Uh -huh. Who was the last? I want to make worse. What's the... Yeah. It was me. Yeah, kick me out. Uh, sorry. It's going right. to be you. You have so many of them. I'll have two coins. Thank you for spotting that. Right. right. Workers in the castle is the next lot of points. So yes. one if they're on the outside, per, two eh? if they're in the middle, three if they're in the top. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for me. Eight for me. Twenty-four for me, I think. Nice. So the next one is uh, transcribed manuscripts. Uh, it's the set bonuses plus any uh, bonus points on the manuscripts themselves. Yeah, so I've got a set of three, which is worth nine points. I have three sets of one for three points, and I have one that gives points for all of my noble, noble symbols. So yep. there's one, there's another, and we're going to have to flip through here to see if there's any others left. But I don't so think I have there. a total of 20 points and uh, four points. I believe it was four points for the... Um, three. Sorry, three points for the um, this one, the one that gives points for every pair yep. of words. One, two... 
I'm falling behind. Okay, next is Castle Leader and Cleric Bonus card. So I am the Castle Leader, so I get five points. Uh, yeah, TDB, you get three for that. Cards, yeah. And now cards. So unpaid debts are minus two. I have one. And then deeds. I have eight deeds and, one, and two approved deeds. So that's eight plus six. That's another 14. I have 10 points. I got nine from those. Okay. And then the poverty card, if revealed. Now, was the poverty card revealed? It was not. No. Nope. But the prosperity card was revealed. Mm -hmm. um, so it's basically, it's for flipped debts. So who's got the most flipped debts? I believe that's me because I have seven. Whoa. Yeah, that's, that's me. That's, so you that's get 12 points. Uh, I only have one. I've got four. Okay. So you get eight. And then I get four. Okay. And that is it. Oh, in games with less than three players, the middle one is ignored. Yeah, okay. Gauze. Ooh, it's your game, Paul. <laughs> hey, 62, 60, 53. So. Nice. Sad trombone noises. Yep. <laughs> Okay. I, I had some really inefficient turns there in the middle where I, I couldn't make use of the characters that I'd played on previous turns and obviously running it, you know, a high state of flow where your previous yeah. abilities or symbols are used multiple times is what you're aiming for here. Yeah. But what do you think of your first game then, Stevie? Uh, I like it a lot. I was very intrigued from, from the instructional video that i'd watched in the rules reading um yeah. i think there might be a few two different places to remember to look right it's a little bit like games like teotihuacan or Tekenyu, where you have to remember oh there's this symbol over there's here this that gets me this yeah. thing at this time um but practice will help with those and i think trying to achieve that flow state uh is is one of the fun parts of engine building games yeah to see if you can have like your engine running as long as possible so I, I rather enjoyed it, and I expect that there's some skill to gain in doing better mm. at it next time. I wasn't sure what to expect, because as I say, I'd read through the rules a couple of times, just reading the rulebook, not looking at the components or anything else, and I, I got a bit confused. Um, it was only when I actually saw the game in front of me and I saw the components that then it started to make sense. I also didn't really understand the implications of dismissing versus recruiting. I, I, I kind of got those two kind of mixed up in my head. Now that I've played it, now, once we were half a game in, I now see the difference. Both of them trigger the ability in the top right, but you dismiss them if you want the ability printed on the left just temporarily, or yep. if you want to recruit them, then you've actually got the card uh, yeah, in, into your deck. I, I thought it was brilliant. I, think I, I mean, a lot of people, I posted in various places saying, which one of this trilogy is your favourite game? And most people seem to rate Paladins as their favorite one. Again, this is just a snapshot of this afternoon. I've only played Paladins once and I've only played this once. I did like Paladins, but I think I preferred this one just from just from what I've seen today. Yeah, um, yeah. I have to conquer. I have to conquer. Uh, the fact that most reviewers gave this one uh, a top spot in their 2020 games. Oh, right. Makes a lot of sense. Right. If you see the complexity, it's actually quite a simple game very free-flowing once you get yeah. used to the rules yeah and then you're just into it and you get lost you don't mm. know what you're gonna do <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I that's the fun part of it yeah i i did like the way the character board worked and again i didn't understand this from reading the rules but i completely get it is you are you are building up an engine but it's a temporary engine that's going to last for three rounds with certain card combos and abilities. I really liked that bit. That was really nice. I was worried about a third of the way through the game that none of us were going to build any buildings, but then that, that sort of ramped up and, and we did build a few near the end. Um, yeah. I had this idea where, um, I mean, I sort of executed it, just not efficiently enough. It was collect a lot of gold in the beginning, yep. claim the, the clergy leader card that gave me the extra uh, fleur de lis and then at the end of the game, dump into the palace. And right. I managed to get two whole palace actions before the game had run out. 
Yeah. But I felt like trying to stall for the sake of making it go longer was only going to allow you both the opportunity to extend your lead. So that's why I pulled the trigger when I did. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Uh, obviously, thank you to you two for helping me uh, learn the game. And um, yeah, so how many, Mark, how many times have you played this multiplayer then? I believe this, either this is, I think this is the only time actually. Oh, right. Have, okay. No, wait, it's the third, second time because I played it at GritCon uh, as well. Right. Okay. And this was my first playthrough. <laughs> right. And James has just popped into the chat. Good to see you, James. I've not seen you for ages, but yes, you just missed it. You can rewind and watch it. Um, or yeah, because we're, we're about to wrap things up. Um, right. Well, I will say goodbye to you two. I will speak to you very shortly on Slack, but for now, I will, I will say goodbye to you here. Um, and I'll see you in another you. stream. Take care. Always a pleasure. Evening, Paul. Right. Uh, and just before I go, quick mention again, please like the video, click that little thumbs up. Um, if you are able to leave a comment in the video, you can't leave it now because it's live. Uh, but once the video has finished going live and it is actually available on YouTube, if you can leave a comment, that really does help the algorithms. A quick note about what I've got planned for the rest of the week. I'm just going to add an image on screen now. If I can find it. Bear with us a minute. It is here. Right. So this, this was my plans for this week. Okay. Uh, it's gone mostly okay so far. My top 10 games of 2019. Yeah, that's not a typo. Uh, that is done. That video has done. Unfortunately, uh, I only have one computer and I've been, rent I've been live streaming on that computer. I can't render the video at the same time. Uh, I'm going to be rendering that overnight. It's going to take about three and a half hours to render, um, but the video is all done. It's all filmed. It's all edited. That video will be out tomorrow. So that's, that's this one. Also tomorrow, I will be playing Shadowrun Returns, which is a digital computer game that I'm about two thirds of the way through. That's happening at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to be playing Great Western Trail, two player game of Great Western Trail. And the plan is that we're actually going to use a real game with real uh, components. I can't have anybody around the house at the moment, but I'm going to be sharing my screen with John over Skype. Me and John are going to be playing Great Western Trail tomorrow afternoon. Me and John are also going to be playing Gloomhaven Digital on Friday morning, because the plan was John was actually going to be coming here for a couple of days, but of course not allowed to do that now. Uh, and then Friday night, so tomorrow night, not tomorrow night, Friday night, something very special, um, supported through the Patreon page, I do a Cult of the Old. Every couple of months, I get out an old game, and we do a playthrough of it. And this week, uh, I've chosen El Grande, which is a former Spiel des Jahres winner uh, from a long time ago. But it's a classic game, one of the classic area controls game, area control games. That's happening on Friday. Uh, I will be back next week. As I say, this, this is just this week. I will be back next week with about the same number of live streams, some computer games, but mainly board games. I will be continuing my Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth campaign. I will be starting Too Many Bones. And I'll be starting the Maracaibo campaign. There's going to be a lot of those three games played over the next, uh, the next three or four weeks. But that's it. We're done for now. Thank you very much for joining me. Really enjoyed this game. Had a really good night. And yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you to all my sub-patron supporters for funding the channel during this month that I'm effectively taking off work. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Good night. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.